do an overview of the tide current table problems. This is practice problem one, which you'll see in the next video. Now, what are we doing here? The problem asks, what will be the velocity of the tidal current at Cooksaki, New York at 9.45 Eastern Standard Time, ZD plus 5 and 11 March 1983. Okay, to find this, we use excerpts from the tide current tables. And they're in the back of the book. I just kind of block off the front with a big clip there, you can see. And now here's the tide current tables. So our first move is, we'll go to the index. We're going to go index table two table one and then table three those are the steps so first we go to the index and look up Cooksaki, new york the index and we're under c there's b c here we are see it Cooksaki, 3726 okay good See that we've recorded it, 3726. And I mean, to back up a little, we took all the information we need from the problem and then we set our problem up. Reference station, time differences, speed ratios. And the time differences are minimum before flood, flood, minimum before ebb, ebb. And the speed ratios are for flood and ebb. Minimum before flood is a slack water. Flood is a max current time, minimum before ebb is a slack water time and ebb is a max current time and these speed ratios for flood and ebb see these this asterisk this means that it's a it's a ratio and we multiply it so again we go and we look up Cooksaki in the index as we did we got a number 3726 right right here follow the dotted line 3726 so now we flip forward in the book to 37.26. And there, these are horizontal. There we are. So, so you can see they start 89, 67, 46, 42, 32. We're on 37, so we check the bottom. 38, okay. We found our page. Now that we found our page, we cruise down the left. And we look, 35, 36, 37, 37, 26. There it is, Cooksaki. And we have all these numbers. The columns we're interested in are these. Time difference, minimum before flood, flood, minimum before ebb, ebb. And see how we already set that up. And then speed ratio, flood and ebb. We set that up too. We're getting ready for anything. If we follow this up, we find the Narrows, page 52. We record that. And now we record our time differences. So minimum before flood, 645. Boom. Minimum fl flood, 657. We record that. Minimum before ebb, 655. Record that. Ebb, 644. We record that. And then we go to our speed ratios. For flood and ebb, both of these were 0 0.9. We recorded those and put a little asterisk by them so we know to multiply. Now we head to the narrows on page 52, our reference station. And we're going to get the tidal velocities at the reference station and the times. So page 52, here's our page numbers. Cruising, it's an excerpt. So all of a sudden it jumps a little. 37. 54, 52. Okay, 52 will start the narrows. January, February, what are we looking for? March. January, February, March. So here's March, and now we need, we're in the right month, we need the day, the 11th. So here's the days, 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 11. So look at these. Now we have all these numbers. Slack water column. This is the time of the slack water. This column is the time, the maximum current time. And then this column is the maximum current velocity in knots. And this F E F E, right? That's flood, ebb. 
flood ebb. So our goal is to figure out where 945 lies in here while considering this massive time correction of almost seven hours. But luckily, we're, we set ourselves up for, for everything. So if we look at all the way up at the top, the very first one happens at 1.57 a.m. If you add seven hours to essentially 2 a.m., it comes to 9 a.m. We're getting close. We're the lower band. So we're going to record on our setup here, slack water. On a flood line means it's minimum before flood. So 157, we record it here. Max flood time is at 458. We record it here. And the velocity of that flood is 1.6. We put it under our speed ratio. And we come down to the next line and say minimum before ebb is 740. We record it there. And then max ebb is at 1055. We record it here. Our velocity of our max ebb current is 1.9. And that E means ebb. So we record it here. So now we have all this information. We say, where's 945 going to lie? We do an estimation and say, well, 645 plus about 2 is like 745. No, 645 plus about 2 is about 8. So, okay, this one's going to be about 8, 845. Yes, that's the lower band. And the next one's going to be above. So we're going to lie right between these two somewhere. So now we have our 2. And we do the math, and we come up with 842 and 1155. And yes, we're between them. So we're working with the flood current. So we come over here to the speed ratios. And we do our 0 0.9 times 1.6 equals 1.44. And then what we do, we need to get the velocity. So we have the velocity of the max flood current at 11.55 with this 1.44. But we need the velocity at any time. So we need it at 9.45. That is where table 3 comes in. So we flip into table 3, which I folded over. I actually like kind of break the back of the book right there too. So it likes to open to table three. And now we're in table three. Here's table three. There's an A and a B, which is confusing. But if you look, how do you know which one to use? Well, use table A for all places except those listed below for B. Okay. Use table B for Cape Cod Canal, Hellgate, Chesapeake, and Delaware Canal. Okay. So we're on... We're being referred to the narrows, not any of these, so we're using A. We got that. So now we say, how do we use this table? Well, we need these two things, interval between slack and desired time and interval between slack and max current. So we find the interval between slack and desired time right here, interval between slack and desired time. What is the slack? It's 842. What is the desired time? It is 9.45. We put the big one over the small one, 9.45 minus 8.42. It equals 103. Good. What's the other one we need to find? Interval between slack and max current. So we come over here. Sla interval between slack and max current. So the slack is 8.42. The max current is at 11.55. Put the big one over the small one, 11.55 minus 8.42 is 3 hours and 13 minutes. Fantastic. So we can enter into this table now, interval between slack and desired time, 103. So on this column here, we look for 103. Well, it's not exactly there, but 1 is there, so we underline this row for 1. And now we come in the top, interval between slack and max current. You see these times? 120, 140, 2, 220, 240, 3, 320, 340. This is where we enter. So we found 313. What's the closest one? 3, 320, 340, 320. We come down this column and we find 0 0.5. So 0 0.5. And this is a multi this is a multiplier. It's a factor. So we put a little asterisk and we take 
our max current, our max flood current at 1155, but we need 945. So we take our max current and we times it by this factor we got from table 3, 1.44 times 0 0.5, and we get 0 0.72 knots. And that is the velocity of the tidal current at Cooksaki, New York, at 9.45 Eastern Standard Time on the 11th of March in 1983. And we pull our problem set in and say, okay, look at that. That one's really close. 0 0.7. It's B. And then we check it. Boom. 1 is B. And that is, that's in a nutshell really fast how we solve these tide current table problems. And now we'll go on and we'll solve five of them in video solutions together. And then you'll have two of them to do on your own. And this can get kind of frustrating. Adding and subtracting time is a chore. But we need to know how to do it. This is actually really good practice for adding and subtracting times. And it's out of date, that's true, but the Coast Guard requires we do this still. So let's do it. We'll have a good time doing it. Solve it like it's a puzzle. And um, make, your, make your grandfather proud and his father proud that you can calculate tide currents the old school way. Let's do this. I'll see you on practice problem one. Let's go.